The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Maria, how's it going? Welcome to our show. Tonight is Tuesday, December 7th, 2021. We are in the Chris, we are in the thick, well, the beginning part of the Christmas season. And um, I, su- I suspect <clears throat> as it winds up, we're going to be even more into it. We just are coming on the tail end of Hanukkah. So I believe two nights ago was the last night. And uh, we have so, so, so many beautiful, wonderful Jewish friends that celebrated this week. We want to send our um, open-hearted love and light to them. Happy Festival of Lights. How beautiful that we get to enjoy this season together. We're coming off of a very, very, very difficult year. And... um, it's just nice to see people celebrating. It's nice to see people lighting candles. It's nice to see people enjoying each other's company. And um, so we want to send an extended love and um, and light to our Jewish friends. So we wanted to say that first off the bat. Hanukkah was early this year. I, you know, I, I don't always understand exactly the, the calendar, but I know that they're usually close. Sometimes they overlap, but. And so many of my friends celebrate both be, uh, through marriage and their children. And so uh, December is just one of those wonderful months. I will say I wanted to um, apologize. Last week, we did not have a show. I was gravely under the weather. And I am so glad to have come out of that. I had a upper respiratory infection that really knocked me for a loop. So I really want to put this out there. I know we're, we've all been careful for over a year. I know more than a year. I know we're all doing great. I cannot stress enough. Please, please, please is no longer a joke and is no longer an option. Make sure that you are vaccinated. Make sure you are doubly vaccinated. And if you are eligible for your booster, which usually is uh, six months after your last booster, do not hesitate. They have become available they're free. Now is the time to do it. We are going into a cold, cold winter. So do not play with fire. I was so grateful that I was vaccinated. I can't even tell you. I was so grateful. Also get your flu shot because the flu is here and that, you know, I might have had that. So um, we are just, we can't say enough about vaccinations. And this is no longer, it's not a political thing anymore. It has enough with the politics. This is about life and death. This is about taking care of each other. This is about making it through as survivors of a very strange time that that we live in. So let's take care of each other, take care of yourself, and let's move ahead. And I'm personally looking forward to a wonderful Christmas season, um, New Year's Eve. Let's, we all want to move forward. The clubs that I work in are doing great. The restaurants are doing great. New York is mandatory now. So a lot of our friends from uh, across the pond have been visiting this week, and we want to say welcome. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're spending money in New York City. We're glad you're seeing shows, so many amazing shows. I cannot wait. Um, One of the shows that's doing very, very well, of course, is Company, which always does well. But um, there's a lot of great shows. But so many of my friends, I think almost everybody I know has seen Company, which I'm very much looking forward to seeing. But, okay, Kenny Holcomb has joined us, and Kenny says, I got my flu shot. I'm so proud of you. I'm triple vaxxed. Everybody, please do it. Kenny is in Tennessee. So, Kenny, you thank God for people like you in Tennessee. Kate Greer. Okay, Kate Greer says, I saw company last weekend. Did you love it? Did you love it? You know, one of my friends is in it. 
Nick Rodriguez, who um, is one of the employees at Brandy's. He's incredibly handsome and talented, and he is on Broadway in company. Nick Rodriguez. Me too, triple vax. Yes, good. We have to be. So um, tonight's show. Um, okay, yeah. So if you look, if you have your program, Kate, Nick Rodriguez. It was fantastic. Yes, I look forward to seeing it. It's one of the shows that I really want to see. Um, so tonight, uh, we're going to bring on in a maybe in about ten seven minutes. We'll bring on our guests, and we're going to talk a lot about Sondheim tonight. So if anybody out there has a favorite Sondheim song or moments that you want to let us know about, tonight is a great night. We're talking Sondheim. We're talking theater. Uh, we're talking musicians. Carrie D'Amato, love the music from Company. Yes. And Patti Lapone. I mean, say what you will about Patti Lapone. She's really one of the greatest of all time. And the fact that we get to enjoy people that are legends now. And um, you, you, there's, you can't say enough about it. So, yes, sir. She was on Sunday morning, CBS Sunday morning. Okay. I think it was the program. And they showed an interview she had done with him that hadn't been released yet. That was about to come out. Or I think it had just been. And Patti Lapone, Patti Lapone showed weakness. She broke down and she cried. She in front did? Of, yeah. And Sondheim was so adorable. He's like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> All right. You know. <laughs> Can you imagine? Wouldn't you have loved to be a fly on the wall to just watch them have a conversation? Oh, Remember his master classes? There was a, uh, oh, uh, back in the, oh, I think it was the 90s, the late 80s and 90s, when I was in college. And I remember, you know, a musical theater student. And we saw the, um, we saw the, this master class that he was having with, with actors and, and telling them how to sing the song. And just, it was written that way. And that's one of the great things about Sondheim is that you, you really, I mean, your acting is there, but if you follow what he writes. Well, I, to me, it's funny that you it's said there. that the songs are like maps. Yeah. I mean, they're they're really like, especially stuff from um, Sunday in the Park with George. It, 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 oh, it, yeah. It's a complete map. You know, you can't, not that you can't divert, in a sense, the feeling you have, but you really have to follow it like a map. And his song, putting it together, just... Mm -hmm. About production and it's art in my head and making, right now. That. yeah, it's you know, head. just it's incredible. I love that. I can, I, we, you and I have put on shows. We understand that whole process, whether right. it's art. I mean, it's all art, depending on the medium. Yeah, and I, and of course, and there are artists that, like, I think Barbara Streisand, what she did with so many of his pieces, elevated it to oh, a yeah. new level because all those orchestrations and just amazing. She is the master of. Um, of using uh, orchestration it, to lift up. I just actually, Judy and I watched her concert. We had been to her concert a few years ago in Philadelphia and they were showing it on Netflix again. And it was just amazing. Kate Greer says, Into the Woods is my favorite. I played the baker's wife. Kate, I could totally see that. She was you in the wrong the story. Wife. You are the baker's wife. Kate is an amazing singer and she's, I love Into the Woods so much. I love all the witches' numbers. You should and see I, my I next love rings. The, um, um, agony, all that stuff. Oh, it's I love just that. genius. It's genius. And I, you know, I, I'm sure that uh, Keith and Barbara will uh, hopefully agree with me. But "Children Will Listen" is one of the most important songs I think that any parent really should listen to ever yeah. in their lifetime. Yeah, because it's just so poignant and truthful. Uh, you've changed, and okay, hold on a second. You've changed uh, your daring. Woods. You're different in the woods, right? I mean, there's everything is so layered with Sondheim. Everything is so layered, and there's just so much that you can keep peeling and peeling and peeling, and depending on where you are in your life, what that song means to you. No, my number one all-time musical of all my life is still West Side Story. It's my very, I can't help it. Mm -hmm. I can't help it. It's still my number one. So, and I'm looking forward to it. That's opening December 10th in the movies. Uh, yeah. So let me see. Okay. And my uh, mom might be in it. My mom's in it. Well, you know, legendary. Yeah. 
Legendary, yes. Yeah. So, Rita you know, Moreno was in there. Rita Moreno plays. They created a role for her doc's wife. Right. And I am very much looking forward to that. Okay, so let's let's hold off on the Sondheim talk because we're going to bring on Keith and his beautiful wife very soon. Uh, but let's. We have a lot to talk about tonight. Okay. Christmas is coming, so Hanukkah is mm-hmm. here. If you want merchandise for your loved one or friend, you have to order it ASAP so that I can get it to the post office and get it to you because, um, you know, all that shipping stuff is taking longer than usual. Oh, Rena's here, Rena Crignali Berge, my cousin from Massachusetts and our Hi, girl. friend. Laura Chester says, I love Into the Woods. So many lessons there. So many lessons there, Laura. You're absolutely right. Uh, yay, Keith and Barbara, my friends. Laura, welcome to our show, sweetheart. We are so, I love, love, love um, Keith. And I just got to know Barbara recently, but Keith, I've known a long time. And so I'm thrilled that you are here. Ed Kutu from Blade Salon in Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Eddie, Hi, Ed. we're, oh, look at the way, you know Hi, what? Ed. Do you know why Leo's looking like that? So, so, um, he's fanning himself because oh, everybody, go. not only do we have our regular merchandise, which of course our tote bag is 10. Mm-hmm. This is a great tote bag. You can wash it a million times. That's okay, Leo. I got Woo! it. Here I am. There's our tote bag. So these are available. Let me know if you need them. Also, and you do need them because their recycling is. Yep. Our mugs, 10 bucks also for our mugs. Go ahead. Keep eating on the other side of that. And our piece, the resistance, we've always said, our sh- blue apron, which is 25, these flat <coughs> shelves. But now, this Should we see how, how it actually fits? Oh, Leo, look at you. Leo Ooh. sporting the nothing but, Leo, the nothing but the apron. Okay. That's right. Keith, it fits everyone. One, fits one size fits all. One size fits all. So this leads us to our our next project. Hey, Gene Simpson Dunn from Danville, Illinois is here, our friend. We love Gene. Yes, Leo. Kate Greer says, woo, racy, Leo. Right. right. You have no idea. First of all, I have to. Yes, Leo's a honey. I have to put this out there. Leo worked tirelessly on this next project. We have created an apron called, I mean, I'm sorry, a calendar. For 2022 called Nothing But The Apron. And it all started when Michael Vaccaro bought an apron and took him a picture of himself with Nothing But The Apron mm-hmm. and posted it to our Instagram. And then Will T. and Hall followed and said, oh, yeah. And he took and all of a sudden. And then I was in Massachusetts and my friend Thomas and Andrew said, you should make a calendar. And I said, do you think anyone would pose? And yeah. <laughs> We have 12 delicious posers. And Leo, I have to buy you an extra Christmas present this year because Leo worked tirelessly combing through all our photographs. In detail. In detail, blowing them up, making sure that everything was perfect. So we have 11 males and one female. And our female is Miss October. She is Judy Mesa, my girlfriend. Hottie McToddy. Hottie McToddy. So, and everybody contributed what they thought was their their best foot forward, their best apron forward. And <laughs> I, I, and I, I think it's going to be under twenty bucks for the apron. Yeah, I mean, for, for sure. The, for the um, the calendar, but it's going to be well worth it. There is a hottie for every month, with a little. Some of them have themes. So, if you would like. Um, please reach out to me. You can either text me, reach out to us on uh, what's the story with at Maria. What's the story with Maria? With Maria at and, gmail.com. Or, you know, if you have my number, just reach out and we will get it out to you. They will arrive in New York City December 17th. Leo ordered them yesterday. And mm-hmm. Leo, I wanted to thank you for your hard work tirelessly. Oh, I, yes, you know, Eddie, I suffered. I, I suffered really for it. But, oh, yeah, Ed. I will never drink coffee the same again. Mm-hmm. Ed, yes, Gene, Ed Kutu mm, oh, yes, did pose in his Nothing But The Apron. And it's adorable. I, I really think this is going to be a yearly tradition. Yeah. Well, I have already, a feeling. 
we have people on board for next year that that didn't make it in this year because they just because people were running late. A lot of people couldn't find their aprons. Mandar is going to be in next year's calendar as is Headman Soto, and <coughs> but he, we have to have uh, Mandar is going to be flanked with girls, and he was he was like I I have to get my apron and then get the girls. So next <laughs> year, I know, but he's right. So we might. That might be a whole group apron thing. Oh, my goodness. All right. So clapping. Rena is clapping. Oh, speaking of Rena, she's clapping for Leo. Rena's husband, Ron Berge, our famous mailman, is Mr. February. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute, Mr. Postman. That's right. That's all I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Mr. February. Because he gets the delivery done. That's right. We have some real, real, real cuties. Michael Vaccaro, Will T.N. Hall, um, uh, Jay Rivera. Chris DiPiero. Chris DiPiero. Mm -hmm. Mario Davila, a manager at Brandon. Uh, Texas, you don't know what you got right? there. And then Andrew Hankinson. The hunky husbands. The hunky husbands from Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Many, many. And of course, the person who loves nudity the most, Dominic no. Pupa. Dominic Pupa. Oh, my God. Uh, Peter Feliciano. My birthday twin. You got That's twins in there. That's right. Michael, we got a lot of, lot of really cuties. So, okay. All right. So enough about the apron, but we're very excited. Uh, very, very, very excited. So let us know if you need an apron. We are going, I'm not an apron. I'm sorry. Anything you need, let us know. We have aprons. We have um, mugs. We have bags. We have calendars. Yes, Jean Simpson done. What does she say? I'm posing for that. You know what, Gene? I would love that. I'm a I fluffy male. That. I appreciate other fluffy peels, uh, people yes, posing I think, as well. Well, that's what this whole thing is about. That everybody looks good in the blue apron. Oh, and yeah. It's enjoying, enjoying wearing it. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to go into uh, a more serious subject. We're bringing on two wonderful friends of ours. They happen to be. They happen to be my neighbors, by the way. They live in the Heights, as I do, probably about seven blocks down. I have delivered marinara sauce to that house. Um, and I got to say, why don't we just bring them on? Are, are they ready? Are they waiting? In the, oh. Hi! It's the Torgans! Hi, girls and boys! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have Keith Torgan and Barbara Cecil. Is that correct? Did I say correct? Yes, perfect. I wanted to get it right, Barbara. I had to get I'm it right. So, I am so impressed. I really am. <laughs> you know, I hate that when people get names wrong. My name, the people get it wrong all the time. And you know oh. what? It's okay. I'll answer to any of it, but it's nice when they get it right. I love when someone says It's James always Peter. wrong. It's always pronounced wrong. So thank you. You're welcome. Fantastic. I can't, well, I can't thank you both enough for coming on. I'm so happy that you're here. And I want to thank you for bringing so much beautiful music to the world. Cause I know that you both do. Um, I I've known Keith a lot longer than you, Barbara. We just recently met maybe in the last year or so through Keith, but I had the pleasure of actually, uh, I was in one of Keith's show many years ago, uh, in a children's theater company that Keith started. The Dragon Show. Remember, Keith? I remember. Yep. And I remember, I actually, and I, I remember uh, seeing you, and then I thought, oh, look, they cast somebody who looks almost just like me, but it's a female. <laughs> I, that's exactly what I was going to say. I um, was so honored when I finally got to meet you because I realized, I mean, I knew you were the writer of the show, and I was playing your character. But when I got to meet you, I thought, he's adorable. I got to play him. <laughs> So <laughs> thank you for that. I, I actually saw you in the show. You did? I did. So you yeah, two have we... been together. How long have you been married now? Well, it'll be <laughs> it'll be 17 in June. Wow. So 16 and a half. 16 and a half. Yeah. And did you did you meet working together? I, I mean you're both musicians, so oh you didn't. No. No, we Was met it... online. Oh, even that's sexy. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, but you're both yeah. in the same in the, you're in the same business of children's theater. Is that correct? No, no. Well, well yes, now, 
now, now, but you yeah. weren't then. Tell her about you. Well, so I'll just say that, that you know, I'm a classical flutist and yep. have had, you know, and I'll be able to talk to you about Sondheim because I did Into the Woods on Broadway. Oh, really? Um, oh, my God. Yeah. Woo-hoo! So, um, but, uh, you know, classical flutist, when we met, I was a flute professor up in Maine at Colby College. Wow. And I was just, I was like a new music person, like real new music, new technology, really far out on the skinny limbs of avant-gardeness. And wow. uh, when we met, she was total. I was totally intimidated. Is that true? I can't even imagine you being intimidated. Well, no. Well, that's because no, you had a crush on her. You had a musical crush on her. I, I actually, I had this manager who knew his music, and she said, "Oh, Keith Torgan. I hadn't met him yet. His music is really great." So I, I knew, you know, it would be, it would be great. But you were intimidated. It was love at first sight, though. Uh, it was love at first note. Maybe it was first note. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the notes go straight yeah. to the heart. Yeah. That's so true. He, he, now, do you play together at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What When we met, I mean, I had, I had been writing children's music for a really long, long time. And Barbara wanted to create something that would get kids excited about classical music. Wow. And that is why we wrote a piece um, for kids introducing them to classical music. Right. That I was, mean, yeah. you know, I, I didn't really care. I just like to make them laugh and have a good time. Uh, but yeah, you're very curious. animated. I would put you in the very animated category. You really come to life. Yeah, but I love that. You're like a like a human cartoon. You know, <laughs> and they true. have so much yeah. fun. No, I mean, and, and I, I just I wanted to get out of the ivory tower for a while i really wanted to get very grassroots so you know we started creating all these different shows pieces together that and it enabled me to like not just be standing on the stage you know playing a concert or you know it it enabled me to expand my kind of way of being a musician with a lot of other disciplines with acting with movement with mm. sometimes he makes me sing uh is yeah. he just awful that way isn't he a slave driver that way oh he, he is you, you have no idea i'm horrible <laughs> he's terrible I'm horrible. well you're very disciplined and, and you really are someone that takes something from a to b and i mean keith that's how i see you you're not just someone that kind of phones it in you know, you're oh, very much you. about the whole project. And, you know, if you have to write certain things, you have to be that way. So yeah. now I do want to um, I, I do want to slip into Sondheim slowly because mm-hmm. last week you were the first person that reached out <clears throat> where I was just going about my business and I wasn't feeling very well last week. So I was a little bit out of it and I got a, a pop up notice notice from you. And you told me that Sondheim had passed away. And I it was the first that I had heard. And I felt, mm-hmm. well, I was, you know, I've jolted, of course, but I felt your sadness. I felt another musician's sadness. And, and what I felt in that was this human that had been inspired by this man and had been that what I saw, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I, You, to me, were someone whose eyes probably, as a younger person, had been opened to this beautiful world of theater by this composer. And I felt that, you know. So I just thought that tonight was very important. Because I haven't talked about it uh, at all. Even I haven't even posted Mm -hmm. anything at all because Mm -hmm. I was processing it. And, you know, so many other people were writing beautiful things that I wanted to take it in, you know. But so tell me a little bit about you. And then, Barbara, I really am dying to hear about the Into the Woods experience. But, Keith, tell me about your connection to Sondheim as a writer. Well, or even as a child. Well, as a child, I mean, one of the first movies I, I think I ever saw was West Side Story. I actually saw it in 1961 in a movie theater. And I was smitten. I mean, yeah. I get choked up just thinking about it. And I'm so excited. I'm. I, my favorite too. 
Um, I was a little concerned that somebody else was making another West Side Story movie, uh, but it looks like it looks amazing. I mean, it really does. Uh, and they filmed it in, I, in our neighborhood. They I did. Know. We actually walked over and watched yeah, them filming. Watch. Yeah. Watch. I mean, they I can't us wait out, to see it. But <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I remember seeing West Side Story and being beyond mesmerized as a kid. It's still my favorite of all the mu- my it's my number one favorite musical of all, of all time. Yeah, oh, me too. Me you, too. You know, when I was a kid, I played the record over and over and over again. I used to stand in the living room and act out the death scene. I would stand, <laughs> I would I, did, I would like I would I would like stand on an ottoman and then I'd like fall onto the floor and I'd be like, there's a place for us. <laughs> but isn't that wonderful? How wonderful that we had that we had those musicals and we had those experiences. We, we did the same thing. We used to do the jets and I mean the jets and the sharks we used to on the street. Like yeah, I mean, that's for what sure. we, did. we used to do that. I I I was in Queens. And we used to sing. I can remember singing the song. And then when I was in the sixth grade, we wrote a play for the World Health Organization at the UN. It was like this competition, you know. It's a big deal. And I I wrote a song based on <laughs> I Feel Pretty. And I really? changed the lyrics. Yeah. yeah. What was it called? I'll Get Better. I'll get better. I'll get better. <laughs> I'll be able to jump and I'll play. I was in sixth grade, you know. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So I was channeling Sondheim. You, you know, were in sixth grade. clearly. Yeah. So we when won. Did you start? We won, by the way. Oh, you won the competition for the whole New York City. I love that. That's fantastic. <laughs> And now, uh, when did you start playing the flute, Barbara? When I was eight. Wow. Eight. And was six, it something six. that you, you just got at school, at, or did you get to choose the instrument, or did someone assign no, it to you? No. What happened is my parents, when I was six, my father brought a recorder home. And my parents, as, um, you know, cultured people, it was kind of like, let's see if she's musical. And so they came in with a recorder and, and also because the guy up the block gave lessons. Oh, okay. So that kind of narrowed it down. Right. So then, so I got recorder lessons. And then after two years, he said, you know, I think she should switch to the flute. And you and know what? Fun. Lucky for you and your parents, the flute is easy to carry. Yes, that's true. That's because I was like a little teeny person. So. I, I, and now I, you're I a see. giant. <clears throat> now I'm giant. Well, listen, it could have been a tuba. It could have been a tuba. It could have, but. But you went with the, with the fl- uh, flute. So, I, I mean, I see some of these kids and, and the instruments that they end up choosing. And then they that's it. They're stuck. They're stuck <laughs> for life. You know, like some of these upright basses or, you know, these little guys with cellos that they're carrying. So yeah. it's a lot easier. I, when I was a kid, I would watch this girl. Uh, drag. I would watch, look at the window of her house, and I could see this girl every day dragging her cello to school. Absolutely, I remember yeah. it well. You know, especially these little girls that were like what the big, uh, the upright basses. You know, that yes. always blew my mind. The upright basses. N- now, you, you, you know, I want to say something about about sometime about back. Anything to you want, honey. Anything you want. Well. I was surprised how devastated I felt. I mean, every time I heard, I saw an article, every time I thought of his name, I was all his songs were going through my head. I would just start sobbing. You know, I'm getting all verklempt right now, just thinking about it. Um, and I, it's not even, you know, it's not even like I felt a, an, an extreme influence in terms of the way I write my music, because mm-hmm. I really don't. But he's been present in my life most of my life from west side story i saw company when i was a junior in high school we went into class trip and saw the original production of company uh on broadway you know so from beginning to end uh he's been there and he's any he, i mean he's a god i mean and one of the things one of the things i think aside from from the music is that 
when when somebody who you admire and are smitten with in that way, in that you know art artful giant way, passes, uh, it, it it really it, it resonates this idea that we're all mortal, right? You know, I I have this weird idea that if somebody is really that, somehow they're going to live forever. Forever, yeah. And then they die. And it's really, it's really horrible. It makes it so real. And you know what I I think it is too? Like you're both New York kids, right? You both grew up in New York. And I, I mean, I grew up in Massachusetts. I've lived here 30 years. But when I think the difference between New York kids is that you actually run among geniuses like day to day you're on the same subways you're in the same highways you're at the same store you're 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 walking in the same spaces as all these geniuses and people that are happening that doesn't happen in 49 other states so i mean maybe california, california. You know? mm-hmm. yeah but I knew Leo was going to come Leo, on. Leo's that. from California. <laughs> Leo was she kid me on. She was like, Where did you go? Where's Leo? <laughs> I know. Well, I always love it when Leo comes on. But I think that that has a lot to do with it. Like that you, as children, you walk amongst this and you're coexisting. And so then, especially as musicians or as actors or whatever, and Leo, jump in because I know I can see your eyes. I know something's happening there. That mm-hmm. you're part of the of the fabric of all of this. There's a wave that's happening and you're, it's like you're in the ocean, you're in the creative ocean of this. I kind of feel like, you know, it's, it's just nor it's normal. And and like, I had a lot of classmates who are superstars now and I, but you know, I just kind of see them as regular people. Right. Of course. Cause they're your Um, friends. Right. Right. And I think, I mean, I think that happens in any in any field. I'm I'm not you know singling myself out in any way, but um, so I, yeah, I under I understand what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. So I think like when when someone like a Sondheim, you know, their their road comes to an end in that way on Earth, of course, but not you know, then we feel mortal all of a sudden, you know. But and I can't yeah the the over and over I keep hearing there are giants in the sky there are giants mm. you know it's like I keep hearing that mm. dun, 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 dun. and I and I get emotional but I got to tell you my very favorite <clears throat> uh, did you Leo did you want to say something honey because I, well, I, it'll go as, it'll lead us on down another road but it it's just he's as much as we think of him just New York and just theater. He was iconic in aspect of the songs from West Side Story to Follies to I'm Still Here. They just, they're, they're in our diatribe. They're in our language. They're in our yes. lingo. How many people have sang these songs over the years? And I wonder, you know, when Lucy died, Lucille Ball, God rest her soul, mm. I cried. I was 20 something. Mm. Um, and I feel the same way when son, it's not just that he was a great musician, but he, he noted our emotions and our history and our lives through theater with his music, but he even did film. I mean, Madonna sang with him, you know, she did, she did um, Dick Tracy, Tracy with him and he got, right, a, he I got forgot about that. Um, uh, so <laughs> he, he is in our, our American icon, you know, and if you're, if you're a theater person, you know, then of course you live even more. So, I mean, right. how many of us sang being alive for an audition? That it was right. told, well, that we were told no more singing being alive. Really, <laughs> it's a little bit like also the end of an era when you think about, you know, like Leonard Bernstein. He left us, uh, you know, in 1990, um, yeah. and right, and he was 70 years old. It was, uh, you know, that that was a long time ago. But but those the people that were connected to that kind of great American uh, musicals, you know, things have really shifted a lot now yeah. uh, in what musicals sound like. And I, I won't make a value judgment, but, you know, to, to me, it, he was the last of a certain kind. I mean, Hammerstein musical. really passed yeah. on that bat- baton to them because I feel in, I mean, my fa- I love 
Rodgers and Hammerstein. I mean, I grew mm-hmm. up. I um, my first role was Jerome in in uh, South Pacific as the little boy Di I I <laughs> love that history, and and my degree was in uh, musical theater. You know, that was my focus of. But he Hammerstein in 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 tutoring Sondheim, just kind of passing the baton because in that next decade over, we had yeah musicals here and there, but. It was Sondheim. Right. Okay. So you see what you're saying? That This is all connected. So what I love about, about all this is that Hammerstein was connected. Bernstein connected. They were all connected. They were a lineage of great American composers. That's right. that That's helped, right. And they helped because I was just recently reading that, you know, Sondheim didn't just appear out of nowhere. He was helped. He was yeah. guided. He was mentored. He he was lifted up by others that weren't that that were selfless and wanted to bring a new light, a new voice in. And I think that that doesn't happen as much as it used to happen back then. It's too hard to do a new musical. It's too expensive. There they need twenty five producers, and right. so people are just so protective. And it, it's it's. Plus, there's a, a kind of fear of um, going out on the skinny limbs, I, I think. You know, there's really a fear because it's so much money, again, right. that, you know, of, of taking a risk and not pandering to sometimes I think it's to the lowest common denominator. I mean, it just really, you Art think is about easy. Sondheim. And, Even and, in your hut. Like I played Miss Saigon also and Evita. I did a whole, I did other Broadway people, but nobody was as interesting and as challenging um, as Sondheim because it's like really, really complex music. Yeah. And, you know, you studied with Milton Babbitt, you know, um, who is like the most far out, uh, of the 20th century composers, you know, he taught at Princeton. He, you know, it was like a whole thing, but Sondheim studied with him. I remember and Passion, when Passions came out, Sondheim, every song for her was a half step higher until the finale, like that, mm-hmm. you, just to back up what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. this is hard. And so, and so it's complex and it's hard. And you, you know, you actually are challenged because when you do 150 shows in a row, you know, like yeah. maybe you want to be challenged because, you know, you're not on stage. You're not getting all that great. You're on stage stuff. You're, you know, you're, you're in the pit. Right, <laughs> right. Now, um, I just take a moment. Uh, our friend Rona said, and even though she is not a musician or performer, I feel like the music and the theater is in my blood. And you know, people are moved. So it's not just musicians. It's not just performers, you know? <clears throat> so that's, and, and and so people are influenced every day by what they hear and what others write. You know, I got to um, just quickly, I want my very favorite, because everybody's got their favorite, right? My very favorite song time is um, I Remember Sky. Mm, beautiful uh, song. To me, Yes. But also, I mean, I love the melody of it, but the lyric, it, it just, I remember, if you've never heard it, so I'm just going to very quickly read it. This is just, you could just run a whole class on this one poem. Oh, from, okay. From Prim, uh, Evening Primrose, which is, I mean, it's a very strange concept. It's about these mannequins, basically. They're trapped in a, or they're trapped in a store and they, but to me, it's about mental it's about mental illness and it's mm. about isolation and it's about disconnection. So it doesn't have to be literal, but <clears throat> I remember sky. It was blue as ink, or at least I think I remember sky. I remember snow, soft as feathers, sharp as thumbtacks coming down like lint. And it mm. made you squint when the wind would blow and ice like vinyl on the streets Cold as silver, white as sheets. Rain like strings and changing things like leaves. I remember leaves. Green as spearmint, crisp as paper. I remember trees. Bare as coat racks, spread like broken umbrellas. And parks and bridges, ponds and zoos, ruddy faces, muddy shoes. Light and noise, bees and boys and days. I remember days. 
or at least I try. But as time goes by, there's a sort of haze, and the bluest ink isn't really sky. And at times I think I would gladly die for a day of sky. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, I have goosebumps. And if that isn't one of the most beautiful poems ever written, forget mm -hmm. even the melody of it. The melody is so haunting. But so if you're listening, you've never... Haunting, Maria. It's haunting. It's my favorite song I'm of all time. Oh, wow. And lots of people do it beautifully. There's a lot of really, um, you know, just go on YouTube and check and, and you know, listen to different um, people do it. But I, to me, that always moved me where I, I thought I could never sing that song without crying. I would mm -hmm. not be able to get through it. You know, like what you were saying, Keith, where you're moved emotionally by something, you know. So now I, I don't know. We didn't really talk about it in length or anything. Did mm -hmm. you two prepare anything that you could do? You think? We did. Yeah, no, we have something we can do. But it's uh, not Sondheim. It's not Sondheim it, because it I, I got to tell you, I can't sing Sondheim stuff. It is well, I don't think most people me. can. I don't so, think but I'm not even going to try. So. Well, would you like to do a musical number? I would love it if you did. Sure. 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 Okay. Leo, are we ready? Oh, yes. Yeah. Keith Torgan yeah, and Barbara Cecil. Hold on. Let's make sure that we're in tune. How I, get this on. I love this. I'm so happy. Can you hear? Is the sound good? Yeah, it sounds good. sounds great. Sounds great. Okay, so this song... Uh, that we're going to do. <laughs> it's called Show Us Your Heart. And I actually wrote it for somebody who was aging and had written a novel and was afraid to put it out there. Just couldn't stop writing. And um, I, I do a lot of what I call song portraits that I do for people. I get to really know them and who they are. And then I create if I were a painter, I'd paint them. Oh, I am a painter. I know. We'll talk about that painter, before. But yes. I'm not a portrait painter. So um, so I wrote this. And it, it's it's funny about song portraits because uh, I was really stuck. And I pulled out this. Someone bought me a set of uh, museum cards that hold sayings from all these painters. And the there was I pulled I just pulled out a, the Gustav Klimt card. And it said, all portraits are self-portraits. Mm. And it's and when I saw that it was like whoosh. so anyway, we'll do our yeah, best to do this do song. I can't wait. I can't wait. So you think that you're old and over, that the best of your years are gone. You're exhausted and wrinkled, your body is sprinkled with liver spots and muscle knots. You're sure there are no more surprises. Not one melody you haven't heard. But then all of a sudden, a new song is flooding your world. Show us your heart. Sing us your song, dance us your dance, take us along, we're in it too, we're in it with you. Show us your heart. 
so you think that it's too late to make a change and you're certain there's no way you can thrive you're feeling too old to grab onto the ring but damn it you're still alive dive in with all of your passion turn your lemons to smoothies and cake you might be a bit rusty come on kiddo trust me get out there and stake your stake Show us your heart. Sing us your song. Dance us your dance. Take us along. We're in it too. We're in it with you. Show us your heart. We know that you have a story to tell, a tale that'll make people think. From a lifetime of pain and a most human stain, you're a Johnny on the brink. You have a book, it's a novel, a song, it's a poem, it's a masterpiece you have been hiding. Take it out, let us in, let us give it a spin, let us read for a minute, stop writing. It isn't too late to get dead in the ground, you'll have centuries plenty to rest. Push yourself a bit harder, your fear's a non-starter, it's time that you finally address your purpose in life to give and to give and to give what God's put in your hands. And if you hold on, you'll have no way to open the door. Show us your heart. Sing us your song. Dance us your dance. Take us along. We're in it too. We're in it with you. Show us your heart. Show us your heart. Wow. Oh. oh, that was so beautiful. That was thank so you. beautiful. Thank you. Thank oh, you. both of you, thank you for sharing that. Oh, that you're welcome. So intimate and beautiful. And what you said about the portrait, Keith, you're absolutely right. My favorite line is, um, let us read for a minute, stop writing. Because it, it's just, it, you flipped it. You know, instead of like keep going, it's like no, no. We want it. We want to know what you have done. We mm -hmm. care. And, yeah. and, and this person is just writing, writing, writing because they are afraid to stop. You know, and almost run out of. It's like if there's a saying in Italian, my grandfather used to say, "Chi se fede mai perduto." He who stops is lost. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot yeah. of these old school people, these old timers, feel that. If I stop moving, everything is gone. So that was just exquisite. Thank you both so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for giving us the, this platform. The chords are so bright and, and just with the top of the flute, just such oh. a memorable. Dreamy. I love the melody. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. So dreamy. Okay, let's take a quick second because we're going to do the food section of our show. <laughs> and then we'll go back. We have to every week. I have to stay creative. I cannot ask my guests to be creative if I do not remain creative. I can't interview creative people and just rest on my laurels. So every week I, I create something. Oh, good. okay. So, yes. So Are you gonna this, send it down here. It's only a yeah. few blocks away. <laughs> Listen, I said that last time I was uh, at your apartment 
when I dropped off the marinara sauce, I said, I'm going to make something for Barbara next time. And I will, Barbara. I'm going to make you some a nice chicken dish, maybe with some pasta down the road. Perfect. And I'll bring it Perfect. by. And we'll bring Perfect. it together. Perfect. Well, you'll, you should come over for dinner. I would love to. I'll, I'll come to dinner and bring it over. I'll walk you are welcome here. here anytime, Maria, just so you know. I know, honey. And, and, and you're, you're welcome upstate, too. Oh, yeah, because we, we bought a house. Upstate. Which is a miracle. You know, for artists to be able to buy a house. I know. It's a miracle. Well, Laura, I'm Laura a miracle. Chester. I'm a miracle. Laura says, uh, this is a, um, she said, they are my neighbors upstate. So your friend, Laura Chester Plata. Yeah. So, okay. So what did I make tonight? We went with winter food. Very simple. Not a big deal. So um, this is pumpkin curry soup. <gasps> Nice Fresh. winter, a little bit of cinnamon, a little mm. bit of curry, mm. fresh pumpkin, delicious. I've been mm, eating recipe. it all week. Mm. Yeah, mm. I've been eating it all week. <laughs> and then I made uh, just a half a sandwich because I, uh, you know, that's the nice thing about being sick. Sometimes you lose weight and I can actually fit into my pants. But as I said to one of my friends, don't worry, I'll gain it back. They were like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so just a nice, uh, Ham and cheese sandwich here, grilled on mm. some nice uh, 15 grain bread. These mm. are my new favorite thing: truffle potato chips. Oh am God, you're killing me. Am I? Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, now I know. It's good. Truffle potato chips. This is. I want to dip the chip into the pumpkin <laughs> soup. Exactly. Ew, right. What did I make for a salad? A beautiful winter salad. Ooh. This is romaine lettuce with red onion, celery, shaved carrots. And bosque pears. Mm. I oh love, yes, I love putting fruit in in uh, my salad. So I'm gonna put um, a honey ginger balsamic vinaigrette uh, with sesame uh, flavored olive oil. Ooh, nice. Mm, yeah. Sesame flavored olive, very good. Yes, thank you, Barbara. Thank you very for knowing. Nice. And this is just my little Whole Foods cookie treat. You know, a little cinnamon, a little. Something. I don't. Is that, a, is that a yogurt covered pretzel? It is. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> I don't bake. That's the one thing I don't do. But I would very much love after the holidays to uh, cook something delicious and bring it by. And we can all hang out and just listen to beautiful music and break bread. I think that would be something that would make me very happy if that would be okay, okay. with you. Of course. Okay. Of course. I'm going to make a nice chicken dish with pasta and mm. some broccoli maybe. Mm, okay. That's that's I think that's up your alley, Barbara, right? I could eat that. Can you I can, eat yes, that? you can eat that, darling. Eat that. Absolutely. I'll let you I'll let you guys know when I'm in town because um I have it guaranteed that I get a list of all the things that I love that Maria cooks. Yes, so I'll let you know. Leo is okay. a perfect guest to have for dinner because he likes everything I make. Oh, my oh perfect. Oh lasagna, I can't. No, <laughs> um, we have about maybe nine minutes left to our show. I would love to hear about your experience, Barbara, playing in the pit of some of these shows. Any show that you would like to talk about, what you know, something that that you want to share with us about the okay. experience? Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, well, let me talk about Into the Woods because I did yes. that one the most, um, and I did the national tour. Um, so I was on the national tour with Cleo Lane, um, who is just amazing yes. absolutely amazing because she's such a musician so she really related to the musicians so we were you know we weren't separate we were all you know really part of the of the scene yeah she's a jazz um, goddess i'm yeah she's the jazz goddess and that and it made it so interesting i played in the pit with um uh, bernadette peters was there um but I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I was like the first sub. I wasn't, it wasn't my, my gig. Um, but it was very, it was very interesting and very fun. I can tell funny stories. Um, tell a funny story, funny story. Funny story. So, <laughs> so we're in the pit, we're on the road and the viola section ha is two guys and they're, they're two very smart guys. And, there's a lot of rests for the viola section. There's two violas. So they decide that they're going to play chess uh, during the show. And they've got the chess board set up between them. And the conductor, he didn't mind. And, you know, 
And so this went on. And finally, one day, though, turns out that Stephen Sondheim and Jonathan Tunick have come to see how the show is going on the road, how it's doing. And they see these two guys playing chess. Oh, my God. <laughs> so they get in trouble and there's no more chess playing, you know. Uh <laughs> But, you know, after a while, when you played a, a show for a really long time, people, you know, would read their novels and <laughs> their magazines. And then they would just come up in time for the queue and then back down. And, and, and I'm sure um, you just know it instinctually, you know, when you're coming back in. Yeah, you know, you know. And, you know, it really struck me. There have been so many Sondheim tributes and there has been no discussion about the conductor, the person who, like, keeps the whole thing together for the people on the stage and, and the music and not a lot of discussion about, you know, no, disc I haven't heard anything about the music. So I thought it would be, you know, I'm really so happy that you want to, you know, you want to hear about it because oh, of course I we just, worked real, we worked really hard down there. Yeah. To, and, to, and, and the way, like you were talking earlier and what I heard was that this music is very complicated. It's not just straight through, you know, like a lot of these jukebox musicals. Yeah, they may switch up the arrangement a little bit, fluff it up a little bit, throw a few extra dissonant chords in there. But really with Sondheim, it, it's a map. You know, we Leo and I were talking about this earlier. You have a roadmap, like something like uh, Sunday in the Park with George. I mean, it, that is uh, like almost has trap doors connected to it. There's yeah, I mean, it's. I think some of the other, um, you know, uh, um, Sweeney Todd and, and the I didn't do Sweeney Todd. You know, they're very orchestral. They're yes. they're very, um, you know, they're 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 challenging to play. And you have to be a really good player because, and then the singers, all the singers who had opera, back, you know, training were mostly yeah. opera singers um, who could then come into uh, doing this this music because every once in a while Sondheim would get really abstract and really and so rangy mm -hmm. and 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 for us too you know so so um, but it was great it it was really just a pleasure to 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 play it and to, I would imagine as as a flautist you weren't bored much like you weren't playing much chess. I had a lot to play, but I had breaks. And I mean, the hard thing about it is that you have a long break and then you have to come in with a solo and something high and um, and you have to, you know, not be out of tune. And you have to play it the exact same way every day. You can't right. change it because of the people up there. You know, they're right. they're important. And, you know, well, they're and, counting on you. They're counting on you to right. anchor them. You know, and so you can't you can't change anything. And if you're the sub, if you're the first sub, you have to play exactly like the person that you're subbing for. Wow, you, you, that's interesting. You can't, so you have to sit, you sit for two or three. You don't have a rehearsal. You just sit in and you kind of memorize the way they play it. And then hopefully you you are you can do it and you get approved you have to get approved after you've had your you know your one time trying to actually copy them in a live performance and then they'll uh, approve you or they won't of all the pieces that you played was there ever a piece that you thought this is the bane of my existence oh oh in, in into the woods Anything, anything that you played, what of all the pieces that you ever played, was there ever a piece that you thought? Oh, any broad in Broadway, yeah. you know, in Miss Sa in Miss Saigon, you sit and you sit and you sit and at the and you hardly have anything where anybody can hear the flute. And at the very end, and it's a really long show. At the very end, there's this big flute solo, <laughs> and and that was really that was hard. I to bet. do, yeah, yeah. Because first of all, you sit, you sit, you're reading your book, you're getting out of tune, so you're, you know, you're going like, you know, you're trying to make sure. Um, right, right. Wow. Okay, we have about, believe it or not, this evening has flown by. We have about three minutes left. Holy moly! I know. 
I know. Holy Keith, do you want to throw anything else in there that you to inspire other artists or um, to inspire? Well, you know that that song, the thing about the song that we just did a few minutes ago it's is in my uh, head. It's in my head stuck now. It's beautiful. It's so much a self-portrait for me also, as I as I mentioned, you know, that, you know, stop doing stop. OK, you've written 5000 songs now. <laughs> go out and sing them someplace, you know. So, well, yes, I remember get people to hear them. Yes. <laughs> and I think we're getting back to that place of doing that, you know, where we're going to be able to do that. But Keith, a while back, you did something for your dad. I remember that you posted. It was so beautiful. You said you did it. Did you write a song for your dad? I did. Yeah. God, you remember see if I remember. Let's see if maybe I do. You, it's been a maybe while. you could play us out with that. When I was a kid, I loved you so. There was nobody I loved better. But now I'm old and all grown up. I've become a fine forgetter. What was it about you? What do I recall? What were the things endearing, Dad, when I was small? Sitting in your lazy boy and taking out the dog. <laughs> Driving to the Dairy Queen and eating everybody's curl. Barbecuing frankfurters on a Sunday afternoon. Singing awful camp songs in the car. <laughs> I can't remember the next line. <laughs> da, 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 da. An army thing. Wrestling tags and wrestling mats, sex station wagons, <laughs> early morning mountain air and revelry. That's my memory of you. Do you know what I wanted to do? For, I do want to do something special for you, Maria. You do? Oh, yes. Yeah, here we go. Because you'll, 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 you know this song. Oh. I used to think I could lay down my sword and retire from fighting the fight. I really believed that when I reached the end of the tunnel, the world would be bright. I never realized that struggles don't end and monsters don't like to go away. And I never realized, I never realized there's always a dragon to slay. There's always someone who laugh in your face and make fun of the things that you say. There's always a hurdle to jump, even after the longest, most horrible day. There's always a feeling that drives you insane, constantly gets in your way. And there's always a dragon, always a dragon. There's always a dragon to slay. I know it's 10 one I don't know if that that's a, I love it. So that was the song that was in the show that Keith wrote where I played Keith. Yes. I, I played Keith for years before I met Keith. So I cannot thank you both enough. You made my night. I'm sure everybody loved it. The show, please. We didn't even talk about your artwork. Torgan art. A -R -T. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I know I've been following you. So Keith also paints. It's beautiful. Please follow both of these beautiful people on Facebook and anywhere else that they are. I can't thank you enough. I think we did a really good thing tonight. I think Maria, this was so this was so wonderful. Really, you're a very special human being. Thank you. So are thank you. you so and much. Uh, Leo, it was great Leo. to meet you. I I I like seeing you on camera. So stay there. Yeah, uh, Leo's wonderful. Yeah, you're great. So and, anyway, we love you guys. We love, love you too. And when you. Leo comes to visit, we will all we will all eat together and talk yes. music. And uh, I, I'm so grateful that you were both available to do this tonight. Thank you so much. And people are saying wonderful show. They had a wonderful time. Thank you, everybody. Continue to listen to Sondheim. But now you have met two new wonderful musicians. Barbara Cecil and Keith Torgan, follow them as well. Let's support live musicians. Yes. Please. Yes. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.